Hi, I'm Nick Pregnance with Calibrated Power. Today on Diesel Insights, we're going to jump into turbocharger failure. Now, everybody has seen that turbocharger that's the wheels hit the cover and the thing is exploded, grenaded. It's in a million pieces. It's like an automotive crime scene, right? And you're like, well, it failed because the nut came off or the shaft snapped. Not so fast. Okay, we're going to dive down a little further. We're going to see what is the first symptom of that turbocharger failure and try and isolate things back into one root cause. We're going to go over a couple of those root causes and then tie them back into how you operate your truck, how you maintain your truck, and how they might impact your turbocharger. Stay tuned. So in front of me here, I have a few turbochargers, a couple turbochargers. I have an HE351VE. This is off a late model Cummins Ram. This is off of an early model 0304 Cummins Ram, HE351CW. The principle is similar, okay? We have a compressor wheel, we have a turbine on the back, and the turbine drives the shaft, which controls the compressor, drives the compressor and compresses air into the motor. Okay, you know how turbochargers work. I'm not gonna go through the details here. What you need to understand as far as turbocharger failure is that there's some really critical parts that control how the turbocharger stays in one piece. Your turbine, your compressor, okay, you know how those work. But in the middle, we have bearings, right? These bearings, the axial bearings, they control side to side play. They basically float in the center section. This is the center section. And then we have the thrust bearing. That's what's in my hand right here. And that controls the in and out movement of the, of the uh, we'll call it the rotating assembly, okay? This is a 270 degree thrust. You can see it doesn't go all the way around. That'd be a 360 degree thrust. Okay, so turbochargers can fail in all sorts of ways. Usually what happens is they lose balance and they lose balance for one reason or another and the wheels make contact and then you have that catastrophic issue, okay? So let's talk about some of the reasons why the turbocharger might lose balance. Well, these things are operating at 100,000 to 200,000 RPM under high load. So the balance is really critical. Now, most of them are balanced on high-speed machines. We have a high-speed balancer in-house. We also have a low-speed balancer. So balancing the turbocharger, you can usually count on a good turbo shop. The turbocharger is usually balanced before it goes out. Now to balance one of these, typically what's gonna happen is the manufacturer of the wheel is gonna balance the wheel by grinding one side of it. So similar to like how you'd add weight to a tire, you're gonna balance a compressor wheel the same way, or a turbine wheel. You're gonna grind part of it so that it comes within balance. Okay, so you take metal off, cool. Yep, makes sense. Well, unfortunately during operation, there are ways that metal can come off of a compressor wheel or a turbine. For instance, if you have a poor, filter, poor air filter on the truck and you're getting dirt or debris in through the air box, now, okay, I have a good air filter, but my previous turbocharger failed and it spit a bunch of parts into the air box and I forgot to check the air box. Well, if it ingests aluminum and it hits the front of these compressor blades, it's gonna take material off of the compressor blades. And as it takes that material off, you're gonna lose balance. How else? I'm gonna show you this wheel out of a rock sore. Now this wheel was oversped. Interesting that you can tell that because if you look at the back of the wheel, you can see orange peel. And that orange peel is where the aluminum is actually separated and, and strained so much that it has changed shape, it's deformed. And it's orange peeled on the back of the wheel. What happens there? Well, you can imagine as material comes off that, you know, as this inside stretches, the outside of the blades, the speed is much higher even. So metal might even just fracture right off the outside of that blade. As soon as that happens, you're already at maximum uh, operating speed of the, of the wheel. Boom, very high load on the bearings anytime the wheel uh, is out of balance. One more way that that happens, uh, you can burn off the blades on a turbine. So we say, watch your EGTs, right? Well, why? Pistons, everything. Okay, well, turbine too. You can burn the tips right off of a turbine by over exhaust gas temp. And when you're over exhaust gas temp, you take that material off the outside of the turbine blades. It's very heavy material, it's in canal usually. And when that happens, the turbine goes out of balance and kind of cascades from there. Well, what do I mean by cascades from there? The balance and the control of the wheel in this direction, 
So it's controlled by these axial bearings. These are bronze and they're fed oil inside the center section. So they, they basically ride on a race, you know, inside the center section like so. If this thing is out of balance, you're gonna put a load that's higher than natural on these bearings and they're gonna, they're gonna break through the oil film. And when they break through the oil film, they make contact with the inside of the housing and they overheat. When they overheat, they start to deform and that bronze or brass is gonna cover up the oil fill holes. And as soon as that happens, it's like a light switch. You totally lose your control on whichever side went out. And then, you know, let's say it's a turbine side, for instance. Well, once you lose these two bearings, well, I should say a turbine side, once you lose this bearing, the only thing holding the turbine control bearing wise is going to be the oil seal. You can see on this one, the oil seal, oil control rings are totally gone. The whole setup's melted. Um, basically burn the oil seal right out of it. And then you totally lose control of where the turbine head is in the center section and it makes contact. And as soon as this situation happens where it makes contact, boom, stall, something's going to give. You're going to see either the nut come loose or the shaft snap or the turbine head's going to go flying. Um, you know, people will critique the weld on the turbine shaft or critique the material that the shaft is made out of. Nothing on earth is going to stand the, the stopping force, the deceleration force of 150,000 RPM hitting the side of a turbine. Um, it's just not going to happen. So something's going to give and the thing's going to let go. Okay, so we talked about losing balance, how it takes out the bearings and the center. There's other ways that you can lose these bearings, okay? One of the most noteworthy ways is poor oil quality. So that can come either with low viscosity, and when that happens, you get the material transfer, you get a lot of heat, and basically the bearing disintegrates um, in practice as you're driving the vehicle. Now you can see here, I have a couple of, a couple of shafts, and these are out of stock LOIs. I'm gonna take this wheel off here just to show you guys something. You can see how nice and shiny that shaft is. I just wiped that off with a napkin and some brake cleaner. This shaft is out of the same style, same style turbocharger. You can see how it's all discolored. You can see the purple and the bluing down by the turbine. You're going to get a lot of heat creeping up through that turbine and trying to get into the shaft. If oil can't flow freely through that bearing, it can't get rid of the heat. And eventually you're going to lose, you're going to have viscosity breakdown on the shaft. And then that bearing is going to lock up. Now you, you can just see the color on this thing, the color of burned oil. You know, this is a poor oil quality turbine shaft. Now, it probably didn't fail. Now, I didn't see any evidence of crashing, any evidence of uh, major bearing failure. These things will take a beating, but they're not going to last forever when they're not respected, not taken care of. Next thing would be contaminants. So you might have good oil, but you might have contamination in the oil or in the turbocharger itself. Usually, poor oil quality is seen in the turbocharger first. So unless you're getting oil analysis done or you're cutting your oil filters open, you're not going to see that you have poor oil quality because you're probably not gonna hear an engine knock. It's not gonna knock the uh, main bearings, the rod bearings, or the cam bearings out first. It's gonna take out the turbocharger bearings because those are the high speed bearings. Now, when you have debris in there, it's kind of interesting because you can see lines on the, on the uh, bearings. It's not that they got hot or that they got black or that they got blue or anything like that. It's just that there's lines and scoring. Now, you get enough scoring on that thing and it's gonna take out a few thou and all of a sudden the bearing's not doing what it's supposed to do and has the same effect as having bad oil or being out of balance. So those are the ways that the axial bearings can fail. Poor oil, contamination, overspeed, out of balance. Let's talk about the thrust group. So the thrust group, this is a 360 degree thrust, it basically controls the shaft as it tries to go in and out. Now there's a lot of in and out loads on this thing. Anytime you're compressing air or you're having pressure on the turbine, it, the exhaust is trying to push the turbine out the back. The compressor is trying to claw its way out of the front of the cover. So the thrust bearing holds that shaft from moving either direction. Now, ideally, those two loads are balanced. And they're balanced enough that the oil film on this thrust bearing can hold things in place indefinitely. If you have imbalance or you have excessive heat or you have a load that is simply too high for the oil film, you're gonna pull through the oil film and you're gonna start making marks on this thrust bearing. This is a great tool for us because they usually don't get sent out the downpipe 
uh, and they don't, you know, they usually survive the catastrophe. And we can tell, okay, what kind of shape was the thrust bearing in, and where was, which side was the wear on? So if there's wear on one side, it tells a story. If there's wear on the other side, it tells a story. What we usually see is is an oil feed side, and that side goes towards the center section. Now the turbine is trying to pull its way out, right? So on these variable geometry trucks like the LOY, the LML, uh, some of the whole set stuff, guys work the vanes really, really hard to try and get them to spool up. And in the scenario where you might have a boost leak or you have some sort of intake issue, which is really common on those older trucks, is you're working the vanes so hard that you're, and you got so much drive pressure on this thing that it's trying to pull against the thrust bearing and you break through that oil film. You don't see any wear on the other side but you see a lot of wear on this face. And that means that the, the thrust group is being pulled, you know, sorry, basically being pulled in the direction of my finger. And it's just, oh, it's just wearing the hell out of that thrust bearing. If you see wear on the other side, that would be like a rag in the intake or surge. So if you have choo -choo 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 -choo, that kind of thing, that's really gonna load that thrust bearing back and forth, back and forth, and then you're gonna kinda of see equal load on both sides of the thrust bearing. Okay, so thrust bearing load, big deal, right? Well, it's not a big deal until it goes catastrophic, okay? Because once that turbine and wheel is able to move back or able to move forward, all of a sudden it's out of control. And these are extremely tight tolerances in these turbochargers. So in order to get a good seal between the wheel and the compressor cover, we keep really tight tolerances, right? Um, 10 thou, 15 thou, somewhere around there, depending on which side you're on. If that wheel can move forward, it can make contact with the, with the compressor cover or the turbine can make contact. If that happens, all bets are off, right? Because as soon as you make contact, it's gonna take material off of the wheel, the wheel's gonna go out of balance and the whole thing's a shit show from there. Okay, so how do we prevent thrust bearing wear? Well, the best way to prevent thrust bearing wear is to respect what the tur turbo builder says for max boost. If you can respect that, if you can keep the turbocharger out of surge, and I don't mean surge like you let off the throttle and you hear one cough. I mean surge like you're under load and you're hearing choo -choo 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 that flutter sound. That's what's really gonna beat up thrust bearings. Um, so if you can keep, keep drive pressure and boost within the range that's recommended by the supplier, and if you can keep the turbocharger out of surge, odds are you can keep the thrust bearing happy. Now this is of course a 30,000 foot view of turbo failure. There's many other ways that individual specific RPOs, well, you know, like an LB7 can fail one way specifically, a whole set can fail one way specifically. Um, each turbo has kind of its own weak points. Um, and we may go into those in a future video. If you guys comment or, uh, you know, post on there, let us know what part of this video you thought was particularly interesting. But this should give you a good idea of those things to look out for, you know, really high level stuff um, and keep your truck in good shape. So keep good oil in your truck, keep contamination to a minimum, watch your exhaust gas temperatures and respect the maximum boost level set forth by the turbo builder. Also, if you can keep the truck out of any sort of boost leak, you're going to protect yourself from overspeed. You're going to protect yourself from, uh, you know, beating up the bearings excessively or beating up the thrust group from having to work your variable geometry turbocharger really hard. Hopefully this has been helpful. I'm Nick Pregnance and another Diesel Insights. We'll catch you next time.